Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to another great unboxing video. Today we're going to be looking at Monogram's 1940 Ford Standard Coupe and this one should be really cool to see. I didn't really get to see any of the Monogram Ford model kits but uh, I do have a lot of the AMT ones and I've even got a Lindbergh one so this will be a first to see what this one is. So without further ado let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1940 to just a year after World War II started and we can see this amazing 1940 Ford Standard Coupe by Monogram. Now I do believe this is actually a Ravel kit but Monogram and Ravel merged together and this name badge flipped from different models all over the place. I am assuming that this originally started off as a Ravel kit considering it's in 125th scale and Monogram traditionally stuck to 124th. But overall you can see just how cool this thing looks. So what makes a 40 Deluxe different from a 40 Standard? Well the 40 Deluxe has the 1939 Ford Deluxe grille in it. And the standard actually had a different type of grill. Now I'll just move this out of the way for a minute and show you on this very old Lindbergh 1940 Ford Coupe that the front end is quite different. It's got little vents that go in here and then it's got the peaked nose grill right in the front. Whereas if you look back at the standard again you can see that the grill is more of the waterfall style. It just cascades down just like that. The other difference is the 39 had 38 style teardrop headlights in here whereas the 40 had a whole new style of headlamp and the standard is the modern headlamp. It's just painted whereas in the deluxe version this is all chrome. So those are the differences. On the side of the box we can see the model with the hood off and the engine in full display as well as the back upper three-quarter shot. This of course is looking down on the car so you can see that wonderful split window in the back as well as the chevron tail lamps. You'll note that there is only one set of tail lights on the driver's side that was also part of the standard package because the standard was the you know lower model on the Ford totem pole basically your starter car so they didn't have the extra chevron taillight on the passenger side because that's how the standards were you only needed one then here we have a buildup of the interior in the darker walnut color that the dashboard was for the standard the deluxe was a different type of paint I think it was tan if I remember right but Overall you can see the differences. On this side of the box we get the features like the length being 7 and 9 16 inches long. Number of parts is 143 molded in white with water slide decals. The 1940 Ford Coupe was a development of the redesigned 39 Ford which broke new ground for Ford. The company was becoming more conscious of design and how it influenced consumers. But World War II stopped these developments when the factories switched over to military vehicle production. The 1940 Coupe was available in two styles, Deluxe and Standard. The Standard version was a lesser expensive but more popular style. It wasn't until long after the war that totally new designs came along. And here is the color chart for all the paints you're going to need. Aluminum, burgundy, dark green, flat black, gloss black, gloss medium blue, khaki, semi-gloss black, steel, and transparent red. Now let's open the lid on our Monogram 1940 Ford Standard Coupe. And here we go. There it is. Nicely sealed in its plastic bags. This is an older release, so... I don't know if anyone will be able to find it. Interesting you get some cool little glass covers for your gauges, headlights and windows. 
Here we've got our wonderful body and the tires, as well as the hood in this bag. Oh, and the tires have the insert white walls in them, which is always pretty cool. One thing I would suggest is you paint the white wall with uh, flat white or something like that because the white plastic will eventually go yellow and then you'll have yellow in your white walls. Unless, of course, you don't mind that, you know, for uh, weathering sort of thing. The beauty rings are there as well as the hubcaps. Looks pretty nice, the little carburetor in there, chrome plated. Or is that the fuel pump? Well, we'll find out as we go along. And we've got our headlights. There's our standard grill. Looks pretty good. Door handles. Oh, you do get the two chevron tail lamps. But I do believe the standard only had the one on the one side. Here's more of our white pieces. Looks like the rear fenders are molded separately. As well as inner fender aprons and the seat. Here we have the rest of the white components with the chassis. Separate frame, that is nice. AMT kit is all molded as one thing underneath. Well, there's our white wall inserts. Here is the instructions, and inside I see the decal sheet. So what I'll do is I'll clear all this stuff out of the way, then we'll take a look at the instructions. Here's page one of the instructions, and we have the photograph of our 40 Ford Standard Coupe here, as well as the blueprint style drawings. And then we have this great write-up down here, and some of this read-before-you-begin stuff. One thing that is cool about the 40 Ford is that it was designed by Edsel Ford, Henry Ford's son. Inside we have all the little symbols that we're going to see on how to build the model, as well as our paint reference code. The next page lists all the part names as well as the numbers. And now we'll look at our wonderful 60 horsepower Ford Flathead V8. So here we have the left and right hand side of the block with the oil pan molded underneath. We also have the intake manifold and our cylinder heads, and then our exhaust manifolds. And that's more or less how AMT does it, except the manifolds, I believe, are molded into the engine block. Here we have our starter motor. We also have the front cover and our distributor right here. On the AMT model, of course, the distributor is molded onto both sides of the engine block and split right down the middle here. We continue with our engine in panel two. There is a decal application here on the front of the air cleaner. The air cleaner comes molded in two parts, which is nice. Here we have the chrome plated carburetor going on top of the in intake manifold. We also have the fuel pump onto the back. Here's our oil filter gluing up into here. We also have our generator and our belts and pulleys and our fan down below. Over here in panel three, we start with the X member being glued together, and it comes in three parts with the center piece, which would be where the engine would mount, or the transmission, really. Then it says to glue the assembled X member to the frame first before other parts. So here's our frame, and we're going to remove these two bars in here, glue our X member in, and then put these sides in, as well as the muffler, I believe this is, in two pieces. Panel 4 shows our completed engine being dropped into the frame. And here we have the motor mounts of the engine going into the little holes here on the frame. The transmission does fit in that center section. Then here we've got our exhaust manifold being glued into place. Actually, our exhaust pipe being glued onto the exhaust manifolds. And then this end goes into that muffler over there. And we also have a steering box and the back tailpipe section being glued to the back of the muffler and coming up in this little bit being glued onto the frame right there. Panel 5 shows the two-piece radiator being glued together and here we have the hoses for the intake as well as the return hoses down below. Now on the AMT Fords the radiator is one piece and you get the upper radiator hoses only but not the return hoses down below. Panel 6 shows our suspension here we have the front axle on this side and the rear axle over here. And what's nice is the axle comes in multiple pieces. So here we've got our tie rods. Then we have the axle itself, followed by the wheel backs. Now these are going to rotate onto those axles. And it does look like the snap fit kind. So make sure the hole is open. 
Now, I'm not really sure if these are glue onto there, actually. I don't know. Hard to tell. Anyway, we have the wishbone here, as well as the front leaf spring, transverse mounted, and that will glue into here. We also have these little spring-loaded shock absorbers that would go onto the front axle. And then here we have a stabilizer bar, which glues into place. Over to the rear, we have the same kind of wishbone, but the rear axle one with the spring molded in place. Two piece rear differential. And this one has the overrider in here. I guess that's the second gear or something for the transmission, or sorry, the rear axle. And yeah, that this is a uh, really cool piece in here because the AMT4 does not have that. So again, a little uh, upgrade to your Ford from Revell or Monogram. Then you got your wheel backs going on to here. There's your drive shaft. You also have shock absorbers into the back. And then this piece is the frame support for that spring. Now we'll just move down the page as we go along here. But here we have panel seven and this is our wheels being glued together. So what do we got? A wheel back, the rubber tire, the front stock wheel, there's a steel wheel. Then you have the white wall insert going in here and the beauty ring, which glue onto your rim. Now over here, we attach the wheel onto the axles. You're gonna do this four times and always make sure that this backing plate has a good open hole because, and same with the hole in the rim, because once you put this together, these are on a little mushroom button. So when you push the wheel onto the button, it's not going to come off. So make sure everything is okay so that when it does go on, it will rotate. And then once you get your wheel on there, you got a hubcap that goes into your rim. Here in panel eight, we see our glass being put into the car. Now what we have here is the front windshield, which is clear, so you're going to remove these little bits. And then you've got your chrome-plated mirror being glued into the center here, where the window splits. We have headrests in here, or sorry, not headrests, sun visors. And those we glue into place here. Our windshield goes in. We have the no-draft windows in the sides, as well as the rear windows being put in. And then the back glass going into the back. Panel 9 shows our firewall being installed into the car, and we have the heater being put into the back of the firewall. And you can see all the cool hoses going up here and whatnot. So again, unlike the AMT Ford, which has this as molded into the body shell, our firewall is separate, so you can actually get more paint detail in here. Panel 10 shows the inner fender aprons being glued to the bottom of the firewall. It says, note, carefully glue outside edge of firewall to inside surface of front inner fender. So that is to keep this all attached inside. Over here, we have our battery being installed. And we also have a decal going onto the firewall, as well as this little tiny cylinder, which glues into here. And there's our aprons down below, and you also get horns for this side of the car. Panel 11, you have an option here, and this is a stock or custom instrument panel, which is a decal, and then the clear would go into the top just to protect it. You have your gear shifter lever sitting here. This is a column shift, so it goes into a hole on the steering column. You also have your standard steering wheel and looks like some paint colors going on in here. So check your references on this just to make sure it's right. Now here we have a two-piece bench seat going into the floor pan here. You also have the little jump seats for in the back because that's the way these coupes were. Then you've got your separately molded door panels. Now the AMT one of course is a tub as we all remember. Here it looks like we've got some pedals for the floorboards. And then we've got our completed dashboard being glued into place once the sides are all installed. Panel 12 shows the interior going up into the body. Over here in panel 13, we see our running boards, and it tells you how to paint them here. And then we've got our body going down to this chassis pan. 
are running boards being glued in place and then the fender being glued into the back. Now this is different from the AMT kit because the AMT kit has the fender, running board, and rear fender all as one piece as well as this, you know, molded in. And then the body is just the inner bit here and that would drop in between the fenders. So a different construction method. Then here it looks like we've got something to do with the brakes being glued right in here. Panel 14 is rather interesting because it's a standard Ford, and yet it says optional assembly. Standard version uses only the left taillight. Deluxe version uses both left and right taillights. However, you can't really build this as a 40 Ford Deluxe because it does not include the Deluxe radiator. Anyway, we have the gas filler cap being glued onto the side of the fender as it is on the real car. Our taillight being glued here. Then we've got a license plate that goes in. We also have the trunk handle going there. We have our bumper brackets in the rear bumper. And that's interesting too because the AMT kit, this is on the chassis. But here it's separate. So there's some more differences. It's got a question mark there. I wonder why. Optional to put your rear bumper on? Maybe for a custom version? Anyway, these are all the components you need to assemble the back portion of your Ford. Panel 15 starts off with our mirrors here. And they are chrome plated and they are in two pieces. And you're making left and right hand sides. Then we have our clear headlight going into the the headlight bezel and that getting installed on the fenders. There's our grill. And another thing of note is that the grill goes in and it's got the bottom piece underneath. In the AMT 39 Ford, that bottom piece is separate. But you can build the 39 Ford, the AMT one, as either the standard or the deluxe. Or as, so wait, you can build it as a deluxe 39 you can build it as a standard 40, and you can build it as a deluxe 40. <laughs> okay, got separate molded windshield wipers, which is nice. AMT ones are molded in place, of course. And then there's a side mirror from this step being glued on. We also have separate door handles. Panel 16 shows the bullnose trim being glued onto our hood. And then underneath we have hood hinges, which is really nice. AMT kit just sort of has... Uh, little square bits of plastic molded to the actual hood. All right, so it says do not glue the hood because you want it to open so you can see the wonderful engine. 60 horsepower. So we pop the hood into place here and here in these little open slots. Then you can glue on your front bumper brackets underneath and then the bumper itself. Panel 17 is our final assembly panel. And here what we're doing is putting on the decals. And it does say not to water slide the license plate decals, but just to cut them off, you know, with the cardboard backing and glue them in place. So here we've got the rear chevron tail lamp only on the left hand side, not on the right. So that is a standard. But down here we've got our decal placement, and this is sort of like a custom pinstriping job, which would have been done in the early 50s, maybe even the early 60s, just to dress it up if you want a custom. But basically you're building this thing factory stock. So it's not much of a custom. However, I am thinking that hopefully you can use some of the AMT bumpers and extra pieces on here just to customize it enough to make it look nice. Again, it's all up to you. Now let's look at the white plastic components, starting with our body shell. Now what makes this interesting to me is that the front fenders are molded in place, whereas on the AMT kit, all you would get is this part of the body shell. That's okay. I have the hood sitting here separate as well, and it is quite nice. It does look like there's a seam line coming up here, and then running out the trim. You can see the sunken in area for that bull nose there. And underneath we've got some squares for the hood hinges to sit into. But what I want to see here is just how well this hood fits onto the body. Ooh, that looks really good. The AMT one does tend to be a bit wide in the corners, but here you can see it is pretty flush on there. It looks good. Uh, there is a little bit of room for the lower emblem to sink in, which is nice. Okay, let's move that out of the way. 
So much like the AMT kit, you have a seam line that comes up here on the fender, which needs to be smoothed out, then wraps around the headlight and then shoots straight out this way. So again, you'll have to clean that up. Oh, and it does have the one that comes up this way, right in there, just like the AMT kit. And I notice a lot of people don't smooth that seam line out. I think it should be. Now I did read somewhere that there was some seam lines to this fender because they couldn't stamp it completely around like this. But then I'm not sure. I'm not sure on some of these car facts anymore. Because <laughs> uh, you try to look a picture, look up a picture of an original and nine times out of ten most of the pictures are the hot rods or customs or something. So again some of this is hard to really know what's going on. But at any rate uh, here is the side molding. Nice drip rails going on in there. We have the rear window molding, location for emblems, and the cutouts for the bumper brackets. So overall this is really quite nice. Oh, up underneath it's also got a headliner in there. There are mold marks, but you can easily fix those. Now just as a comparison, I actually have three 1939 40 Fords. And what we have is, of course, our review one here, which is the Revell version. I also have one of the AMTs. Now, this is the two-door sedan, not the uh, business coupe. And then here I've got the Lindbergh version. And you can see that the nice part is they're all molded in 25th scale, and they all line up pretty nice as far as dimensions go. One isn't longer than the other or something like that. Now, it is interesting that the Lindbergh kit is basically a direct copy of the AMT kit, with the exception of, well, some exceptions, but primarily the front vents in the hood there, or not the hood, but the front fenders are different than the ones on the AMT kit. But overall, I mean, these almost look like you could interchange the parts. So it is nice that Ravel keeps the dimensions the same. Although you can see that with the AMT kit and the Lindbergh, they have the same kind of fender design with the fenders here and the body sits in the middle and the body is just basically the shell behind the firewall. Firewall is molded in place. Whereas on our Ravel kit, the front fenders are molded in and the firewall gets in separately. So again, quite interesting. I think with this uh, second-hand AMT 39 Ford, I'm going to duplicate this into a 40 Deluxe. Or sorry, a 40 Standard, just like this. Now there is only three paint colors for the Standard, and that being Black, Lion Blue, and Cloud Mist Grey. And the wheels. The wheels were black on the basic cheap Standard, or you could pay for the color matching wheels. Now because the wheels were black, and if you ordered the car in black, you would get the color match wheels for free. Another thing that's interesting with this kit is you get the separate interior floor bottom, and it does have the kick up in the front molded in place. And this fits really nicely in the body right into the fender wells. Then you got your gas pedal here, and, and that would be your brake and your clutch. The little hole in the center is for the steering column. Then you have the carpet down below and actual nice floor mats molded in place. Our next parts tree includes our engine block, our heater with the hoses sticking out the top, the front of the engine, the battery, distributor, the generator, that weird, I think this is something to do with the master cylinder or the brakes, two-piece radiator, our fan, our frame horns here, or sorry, these are the bumper brackets. And then we also have the wheel backing plates and the inner fender aprons. One thing I noticed on the fan here is that all six of the blades are actually two different sizes. So you have three long ones in here, and then down below here, you got three short ones. So that is kind of interesting. I never noticed it like that before. There's our inner fenders. Nice detail on the radiator. Now turning this over, there are some mold marks in here which need to be sanded down. Overall though, it looks really good. Yeah, I like it. Look at the battery detail on there, 6 volt. 
Very nicely done. On this parts tree, we have our rear fenders. We also have the little jump seats, which are down. And then we have the front of our bench seat. And we also have our sun visors way over here. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see a little bit of a bump here, and that's where the chevron is going to go on. There isn't one on this side, so if you are going to put the dual chevrons on the back, you're going to have to make sure you measure up and match the bottom. Here's a little dimple for the gas cap to go onto. Pretty nicely done. Seat looks really good. It's got the piping in around here, which is quite nice. Simple back on it, so you could flock that seat too if you want. Then you've got your sun visors there. Again, really nicely done by Ravel. A couple of mold marks in here that you should get rid of in case they interfere with the rubber tires. But overall, again, very nicely done. On this parts tree, we have the chassis insert of the car with the rear trunk here. So you could actually make a nice sheet of flat plastic, glue it in here and figure out a way to have the opening trunk. And this detail will give you all the insides of that. We've got our steering column here. We also have our full frame and then some of the bits for the X brace as well as our shock absorbers here. There's the transmission mount. We've got a couple little pins up here and some other components. It might be for the engine. Looks like the starter motor up there and then our steering box and that little box that uh, mounts on the firewall. Look at the nice detail on that floor pan there. Again, some really cool stuff and nicely detailed and made by Monogram or Ravel. Here we have our door panels, both left and right, and the little open hole for those jump seats. We also have our firewall, our dashboard here, and it's even got the hood release uh, lever in there. Then we've got our running boards here and the back of our seat back. Bringing this up to the camera, you can see again, very nicely done. It's got the little armrest in there, just like the real thing. Nice looking padding on that as well. There's our firewall with the big open holes there for the hood hinges to slide into. Dashboard looks nice. Let's just go up this way. Now I do believe there is a slightly different instrument panel for the 39 that AMT does not have. And I don't know if that is made up in the decal or not. And the running boards look great too. Turn it over. How many mold marks? Mold marks in here and here. Some, well, of course, this is all behind everything, so it doesn't really matter, but it might on the running boards because those are out and exposed. If you ever turn your model over, you're going to see those. Here we have the wishbones, both the front one and the back one with the springs attached in place. We also have the lower return hoses and shock absorbers. Then uh, we've got the upper radiator hoses as well as our wheels and the wheel backs. I do believe this is a Columbia two-speed rear axle, but I could be mistaken on it being a Columbia one. Not 100% sure, but it is a two-speed rear axle at any rate. Or a rear axle with an overrider. Uh, there is the front axle, the wishbone style, as well as the stabilizer bar. So again, some really nice looking stuff on here. Those uh, stock wheels are pretty neat. Would be cool to see some customizing parts in this like old AMT had. But uh, overall, not bad. You can build a perfect factory stock standard Ford out of this. And our final white plastic parts tree before we start hitting the chrome has our exhaust tailpipe in here as well as the one going off the manifolds. We have our steering here, uh, that is our, our steering rods. And then we've got the rear cross member, our cylinder heads. We also have the oil filter here, the intake manifold, the two-piece muffler sitting standard on its own. Now AMT had these molded in underneath, so it's nice to have those free. We also have our exhaust manifolds up here. Belts and pulleys, the standard steering wheel, the two-piece air cleaner. This would be an oil-filled air cleaner. And then we also have our white wall inserts and the wheel backs. So again, bringing it up to the camera, 
You can see the stud bolts onto the cylinder heads as well as the spark plugs. There is a little slot there for the oil filter to sit in. Again, really nicely done. And uh, it it is interesting that the 1940 Ford has the V8 engine in it. And it wasn't until 1941 that Ford brought out a flathead six-cylinder engine. But you can't put it in this because this is the year before. Now, how did I know that about the 41 Ford? Well, my dad picked this up. This is a kitchen table resins 125th scale flathead Ford six-cylinder engine for 1941 to 51 Fords. Now this is a resin solid block kind of motor. It does not come in this kit. Something that my dad picked up extra. But it says this kit can be used to create an authentic flathead six engine that is correct for almost all Ford cars and light trucks from 41 through 51. So something cool that you guys know. And that is that Ford's flathead six came out the year after. So now we're going to look at the chrome glorious chrome. <laughs> and what we have here is two parts trees. And we got our bumpers on here. We've got our grill. We also have that bull nose for the hood and our door handles and trunk handles. We've got the two chevrons in case you want to add the deluxe little bit to the back. We also have our headlights, our license plate backs, and then carburetors and whatnot. We got the nice Ford hubcaps on this one and the beauty rings. There's our fuel pump back there. So let's bring up chrome parts trees to the camera. Again, really nice looking stuff on here. The headlights are wonderful. Now, these would all be painted body color and just the little top bits on here, which are your I think they're the driving lights. I don't think they had turn signals quite in this era. Maybe these lights were on at night all the time. But at any rate, they're up there, and those would be chrome. But the bezels themselves would be painted with the body color. And then the grill, it's just the center bit that comes down that was chrome. The rest of this is all painted if you look at actual pictures of the car. So overall, again, really nice detail on here. Some very tiny parts, so be careful when you're clipping them out little tiny oval mirror up here as well. The two-piece mirrors with the backs. So again, be careful when you're clipping these out. Now, unfortunately, most of the hubcaps are sitting down here, but there is one attached, and it does look very accurate to the standard hubcap, which with the AMT kit, you don't actually get one like that. You get the deluxe cap, so that's always nice. And I did figure that I think if you use the AMT 1950 wheel, and the hubcap from a 32 Ford. And you put that combination together, you will get something that is much closer to the standard hubcap, but it's not perfect. But at any rate, that is my solution to fix the AMT one if you're doing that and turn that into a standard. But overall, the chrome on here is really great and will look wonderful on your model. Here we have the parts tree that contains our glass. And what's interesting about this is Monogram decided to mold each window as a separate flat panel, which is really nice because AMT has it as one big shell, which goes up underneath the roof. So by doing it this way, you can add in the headliner. Now looking at our clear parts, they are quite wonderful. You get your headlights in here, as well as the little glass that covers the instrument panels. You get two of them, one with the circle gauges in here and one that's flat for the more or less deluxe style, with the speedometer that goes across this way instead of rolling around like the circular one. Overall, the glass is quite nice and will look great in your model. Next up, we have our tires. And these are nondescript, so they don't actually have any lettering saying Firestone or Goodyear or whatever else on there. But they do have a nice tread pattern just right there. And they have the opening for the white wall inserts. Now, I think on the standard, it might not have had white walls. I think they would have been black wall. But, of course, the owner could always opt up and get white walls on the car if they wanted them. Uh, you will have to cut these off of the parts tree and then use your tire spinning tool just to get rid of any seam lines and cut off points. But overall, these tires look not that bad. 
And now for the big reveal of our decal sheet, and here they are, those nice wonderful 60s style pinstripes. We also have Illinois plate, which says 40, and we have a California plate from back in the day. We also have the two different instrument panels, so there's the one with the circular gauges, and here's the one with the needle that goes across. So again, really cool stuff. You also have some under hood decals and ones that would go on your radiator hoses. So awesome looking stuff. The color is great on those. Beautiful. Put them on your car and enjoy. Oh look, there's even Ford scripts up here beside the number 17. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where I got to show you this amazing monogram 1940 Ford Standard Coupe. Now, it is quite different from the AMT kit, but not that much different considering that they are both 1940 Fords. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. And until next time, everybody, if you want to get some great model kits for yourself, check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. You'll see a little icon pop up somewhere here, and you can click and go directly to our site. So until next time, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.